Right now we have on the phone uh, Dr. C uh, Cecilia Linton, who is the author of The Night Who Gave Us King Arthur. And we uh, welcome you to the show. Uh, Cecilia, thank you for being with us. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can hear you okay. very well. Thank All you. Right. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're so glad that you could be with us today. And uh, maybe if we could jump right into the book itself sure. and talk about the bold claim, bold claim uh, of the book and, and what it's about and, and uh, you know, the surprise that some people might have to hear uh, what the book focuses on. Well, the stories of King Arthur, which originated in French, were translated and compiled in the 15th century by a person called Sir Thomas Mallory. He told us his name in the book, and he told us um, when he was writing and so forth. But that's about all he told us. So people have wondered ever since, for 500 years, who this Thomas Mallory was. And they have uh, generally settled on a person in 1896 who was um, a rascal. He was in and out of jails for 10 years for all kinds of violent crimes. And readers, ordinary readers, um, have had a hard time accepting this person as the writer of this book because it's a very devout book, believe it or not. All that we have heard in modern times about the stories of King Arthur um, all focuses on the love affair between Lancelot and Guinevere and that is very much downplayed in Mallory's work. But it's just a symbol of our time that that's the thing that's interesting to people. And so that's all we hear. But if you read Mallory's book, you will see that there's, it's full of devout Christianity. And in fact, um, that's what led, to, led me to this idea he told us he was a knight in the book, but it just dawned on me that maybe he was not a regular secular knight. Maybe he was a knight of the church. Oh. And I started researching knights who were also monks, like the knights, hospitalers. I settled on them because I saw that the Mallory family, immediately saw that the Mallory family was considered to be a hospitaler family because they had so many members in that order. And it just went on from there. And everything I found just uh, reiterated that this man was a knight of the Knights Hospitaller's Order. Wow. He was a monk, he was a knight, and he was the one who translated the King Arthur stories into English and collected them in the book that we have now, which was a wonderful discovery for me. And I was very <laughs> I guess, I guess it was. <laughs> D it Dr. Was. Linton, what is it that, that, that inspired you to even become interested in this story and, and then to write the book? What, what motivated it? Well, I read, uh, I read the book when I was in graduate school and I liked it. And I, as time went by, I wrote an article or this had a conference, this and that, on the subject of Mallory. And gradually I thought, well, I want to know more. And I asked somebody who knows about the identity of this man. They led me to a man named B.J.C. Field, who had written a book called Life and Times of Sir Thomas Mallory. Well, it was the mess to me because, <laughs> well, in the first chapter, Field put forward all these reasons why he thought it couldn't have been anybody else. And they all supported the idea that this man was not a secular knight, all the reasons. For example, uh, somebody else had been shown to be involved, that's the man that I finally hit on as the, the author, and he was disinherited by his parents. Well, Field argued that if he was disinherited, then he had to be illegitimate, and therefore the other man wrote the book. That was just such a weak argument for the other person that's what started me off. But wow. once I started with that idea, it just fell into place. It's like dominoes. You spoke of dominoes a minute ago. The, the um, one thing led to another, to another, to another, and I'm firmly convinced that this man was, in fact, a night hospitaler. I see. Yeah, talk about what, what would you like the impact of the book to have on, on this, the scholarship of uh, concerning the man who wrote the story of King Arthur and how that can help in, in people researching and, and doing a little bit more looking around in the future? 
Well, I hope that the scholars who have supported the other man, who is not the right man, will read it or hear of it and start looking themselves and become convinced that this is the true author of the Arthur's stories because the stories are intended to be inspiring and they are inspiring, especially when you see, you don't even have to write, read between the lines. You just read it carefully and you will see it. And the last thing this, the author says in his book is that he is a servant of Jesus both day and night. That's the last sentence of the book. Uh -huh. That's a big lead right there. If people will just take it, they will see what the truth is. Well, just quickly, what's the reaction been to the book, and, and where can people get a copy? Because I'm curious now. You got me. You got me thinking. <laughs> well, you can get it on Amazon, Books a Million, uh, all the standard um, online booksellers. You can also go to the publisher, which is Christendom College in Front Royal, Virginia, or the distributor, which is Sophia Press, and they all are happy to sell your book. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Dr. Cecilia Linton, thank you so much for being with us. The Knight Who Gave Us King Arthur. And uh, please uh, check it out if you can. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.